Hello, this is Ross from Figure Painting, and today we're trying out a game of Lion Rampant. We're using some fancy figures, because we've got them individually based. We haven't made many changes to the rules for this one. Well, hardly any, in fact. And it's a very flexible system, and it's a good fun game. So, a uh, little bit of introduction to the rules. If you haven't played it before, I hope you enjoy the report. First thing worth doing is to um, make a summary like this. This is what I've done anyway. On the left-hand column, you see all the different troop types available in the game. And whatever army you're playing, you basically have to slot in your troops to one of those. So if you're doing knights, they'd be the mounted men at arms. First three columns, attack, move, shoot. And that's the number you need on 2d6 for them to do those things. So you say, right, my knights are going to attempt to move. You need to roll seven or more. If you fail the roll, this is the rub, that ends your whole turn. <laughs> so you try to do the easier actions first, or the more important. But anyway, that's part of the, the skill and fun of the game. You then see uh, another three things I've grouped together. Attack value, defense value, shoot value. This is a score you need on one dice to get um, a hit. So if your attack value is three, you'd be rolling 12 dice for a full strength unit, 12 lots of three, count the many hits. Uh, same for if you're defending or shooting. You then divide this value by the target's armour. So the better their armour, the less uh, kills your hits become worse. There's then a morale test based on courage, which you see there. Range, movement, special rules, that kind of stuff. You'll also notice their models count. In most of the units of good stuff, you get six figures. And that's the points cost if you're adding up an army. So that's a very quick run through. I'll do a proper intro video at some point. Right, my army for the day was the Greenskins, yay! <laughs> I always seem to be orcs and goblins, whatever the game system, Warhammer, whatever. Always loved them for some bizarre reason. Uh, we'll come back to the general in a second. The, the tougher shoes, the Black Orcs, count to them as foot men at arms, give them the extra quality of wild charge, which usually only applies to cavalry. That means anything in range, you've got to charge it. Well, you do an activation roll, at the beginning of your turn. If they pass, they charge. If you fail, there's no penalty. But they can't attempt to do anything else. So you lose control, but more chance of them attacking. So that sounds about right for orcs. Gave the same thing to the, the main orcs. They kept the sergeants, not quite as powerful. And spider riders, and we said, oh, they can climb up mountains or <laughs> pass impassable terrain. Which, which does come into this game. There's a big lump of it in the middle of the table. Four lots of goblins just the low level yeoman with spears. So there's a little look at some of the goblins. Tell me the little goblin equivalent of the Spartan 300. <coughs> Red cloaks and little Spartan symbols on the shields. Bit of fun. Except I had to do hundreds of them. <laughs> there's the black orcs. Spider riders behind them with one wolf to make them up to six. You notice everything is base of Warhammer. So also in fives. And there's two ranks of orcs, plus a couple on the end, makes 12 of those. <coughs> and there's the general, you probably recognise him as Grimgore. Most pictures are a bit uh, underexposed because all the white on the snow. Made f I really want to get the snowy background, but it does make it hard to photograph. Now the difficulty with the game, if you're using fantasy, is you don't really have special character rules. There's a suggestion that you can have things like Knights of the Round Table, where each individual knight counts as a unit but which is fine except if you want to put a leader with a unit that means you've now got two units so you'd be rolling 24 dice instead of 12 which makes the, the character way too powerful so if you give them a bonus what do you charge for anyway we're gonna do another video on uh, ideas here's some of the basic ideas if you want to have a good read of that then pause the video I'm not going to go through it now all we did for this game was that if the unit gets reduced to half dice, you get eight instead of six. But I've uh, got a few ideas for magic and wizards and all sorts of stuff, which I think will add to the game for fantasy. And um, yeah, look out for the next video. Subscribe if you want to catch that. <coughs> and then the elf and human rangers. So there was two people playing that side, so we split it into two small forces. Uh, Self-explanatory there, the elf cavalry are drilled, which means they don't have to do wild charges. They choose if they want to charge or not. They're men at arms. Two lots of expert archers, which are 
quite deadly in this. The the basic rule is if they're at less than twelve inches range, they're hitting on fours instead of fives. And then you've got the ranges, and as you can see, what they are there. And we got one general each. So there's a little shot. Some of the elves. I think actually uh, I've called them elves there. They're part of the rangers. Uh, they're forming part of the rangers force. There you go. Some of the figures that uh, Nick brought along with him. One of the core of his uh, his, ra his rangers. So the larger unit are twelve. They only count as yeomen, but they've got javelins. Uh, we're on to the elves on the far side. Painted up for the end times. So I'm very pleased with these. Combined elf force. You've got high elves, dark elves, wood elves. And I put cloaks on each one. Quite the way they look. And there'll be a separate video on those at some point. So uh, thank you to Ford for letting me uh, use them for this game. Uh, there's some deployment from the game, from the rule book. We just pretty much plonked everything down and got on with it. <laughs> There's the two young lads is up against, deliberating over their deployments. The reason this photo's in, though, <coughs> as gorgeous as those two are, is to, if you look behind them, you get some idea of the scale of Firestorm. Fantastic gaming centre in Cardiff. It really is amazing. 60-odd tables. The far right of the picture, you can just about see. There's more tables down another row. And if you go on a Thursday night, it's very busy. There's clubs meeting there. I'll put some links on. Magic the Gathering tournaments get 60 odd tables going. Oh, it's, it's great. And there's a full shop, of course, with all the stuff you want to buy. Uh, and I highly recommend it. And we'll be doing a video on there soon. <coughs> right, there's an idea. I don't know how helpful the picture is, but you can see I've got four lots of the goblins. My basic plan is goblins three and four to try and draw the elves forward, because in the middle. That sort of rock you can just about make out there is a big impassable area, apart from for the spider riders. So the hope is to split the armies either side of it, Goblins 3 and 4 will draw them on, and the whole rest of the army will go smashing in and try and take out the rangers before the elves have a chance to turn around and join in. It's tempting to take out the elves first because they're a bit tougher and they've got more shooting, but getting shot up on the way in, Goblins being a bit flaky, they might never get there. So that's the plan. Okay, so uh, jump over to the elves there, start to move around the flank, which is good to see, because we ain't going to be there for long, we're scooting off to the left. Just a little shot of their newly painted high elves before they go whizzing off into their new, cut, new owner. There's the better shot of the big mountain in the middle, impassable, so you can see there the, the rangers side peeling off to the left, the elves peeling off to the right. Uh, activation roll, just to give an idea. It deployed less than six inches in to move. Oh, let's check my table in front of me. For yeoman, which is what we counted the goblins at, need five plus, they've rolled ten, so off they go. They start advancing towards the wood to get stuck in. <laughs> and then a four, so they're on their own because the other elves, ah, sorry, elves, the other goblins didn't activate, so they're sitting there. Ends the turn over to the elves. And they're all five. They're trying to move. They need six. Ain't going to happen. End of, t end of their phase. And then we go over to the rangers. End of their phase. <laughs> Nothing happening. Back to the goblins. And four. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, we need five on two dice. And they're looking for like sixes or fives. We just couldn't, couldn't, ha couldn't make it happen at all. Now we did agree, because they're getting two activations, and they got slightly more points, they got 30-something, I got 27, they'll also get two activations, but I felt a bit cheap asking for it then, when they've done nothing for the whole turn. So went back to the elves, again didn't activate. So on the one hand, it's helping them a bit, because if they had come further forward, it would take them away from where the fighting is hopefully going to be. But still, it's uh, they're not doing anything, at least they're not shooting me. <laughs> Poor old Nick. The Rangers again. Nothing at all. I managed to shove one of units up, and again, nothing at all. Bizarrest game. In two rounds, we tried six, act so that's seven activation rolls. One success. Thank God that changed, otherwise, the game would have gone nowhere.
can happen. Doesn't happen again much. Right, so the elves finally get moving. So here comes the cavalry, moving up around the far right as I look. I think you must have got an activation in with the archers because they're uh, further forward. And finally the rangers start to come nearer. Which is what I want, really. I like them either side of the mountain, but there you go. Right, goblins start to push up on the left. Spiders going for the mountain in the middle. Hopefully you're going to get going to get to grips with them. Elves coming around the far right. Come on, elves, get moving. You're no good to me either there. Oh, just to clarify, you can see a template on the right-hand side of the picture. That's uh, rough terrain. Uh, the wood's also rough. The way it works in the rules is if you're in rough terrain fighting, everyone hits on a five, everyone has armour two. So the good troops act a little bit better, and the, the uh, sorry, the worst troops act a little bit better, the good troops a bit worse. It's a leveller. Okay, start to see the picture of the battle start to appear now. Uh, units three and four, the goblins on the right, saying, come on, have a go if you're hard enough to the the elves, which are sweeping round. The spiders are toppling precariously on the mountain in the middle. And the units on the left, if I can get the activation, it's going to push up. I'll be looking at three or four units onto one in the middle. In this game, just to clarify, you can't do a joint attack, but one can attack, you resolve it immediately, then another one can attempt to attack, resolve it immediately. So, it, uh, assuming you get the activations, you can go for it that way. So, he's tried a long range pot shot with the, the elves there. They've hit, taken one off. Thank goodness, passed their courage test. Uh, just to quickly explain that one, as this is an introduction game, each unit has a Courage value, the higher the better. You roll two dice, you try to roll that number or higher. So if you're a quality mounted men at arms, anything but a double one is fine. You only need to make a three. You also get plus one if you're in 12 inches of the general, so it's automatic. But you then subtract one for every loss taken during the game, not just that round. So if you've got a unit that's lost five, Suddenly that three you're trying to make becomes an eight. And it gets progressively more difficult as the game goes on. Anyway, so they've lost one uh, past their test. Uh, this is a bit of a contentious point here, because the spiders scurried across that mountain. Apparently, those elves down in the, below them can see them. <laughs> Not only see them, they can miraculously shoot them with an arrow. Oh dear, anyway... <laughs> let them get away with it. Well, like, give, it give it a chance to throw some dice. Partly because he'd hardly done anything due to the activations not working. So, uh, being cover, sorry, being long range, need a six to hit, so have a five. He got a couple of sixes. The effective cover in this game is to increase the armor value by one. So instead of requiring two hits to take one off, you need three. And sure enough. <laughs> Oh dear, so the spiders, here we are, they take a test, just to explain that rule again about how the morale works. So the mounted yeoman, their courage is five, taking a hit becomes four, general nearby, iron oh, actually five. But I think we decided because of the height of the mountain, the general's not near enough. So <laughs> that becomes a fail and they are, they're called, what's called battered. Same as broken in most rules. And they've come back. So there we are. <laughs> ah, okay, who wants to argue over things like this? Right, on the left, meanwhile, the the javelin uh, rangers have come to the edge of the wood. The range of javelins is six inches, so the goblins are just out of range. We also had a slight clarification to make, because the rules say if you're on the edge of a terrain piece, you can shoot in. And if you're on inside, you can shoot out kind of thing if you're on the edge. But our terrain pieces are quite big. So uh, you can't just shoot through an endless wood. Doesn't make any sense. So we've said the range in woods is six inches. So if anyone knows the clarification, pop it in the comments. Anyway, it's out of range, whichever way you do it. Is the range measured? We need to get one figure in range. But they're not. Anyway, but they are in range of the... the Goblins moving because they move eight. 
not slowed down by the terrain. They've rolled eight, as you can see there, for activations. They're off. Get stuck in, lads. The fighting started. Right, we've counted it. Has both been in rough terrain because we're partly in, partly out, so it would just get messy. So we need fives or sixes to hit. I've rolled four, which is not bad. Twelve dice, slightly above average. <laughs> and then there. Ah, oh, the Rangers, as you can see, have rolled a handful. Six. We both count as armor two, so that's three dead goblins, three dead rangers. Both take a courage test. If either side loot breaks or gets battered and moves away, they've lost the melee. Whoop. You just about see the distance as it turned out. The goblins rolled high and stayed there, and the rangers went away with a battered marker on them. <laughs> So there we are, it's the courage test, more the number of hits it counts really. Quick overview of the battlefield, you can see the orcs might start to surge through the gap to the left of the mountain. Elves slowly coming around the right hand side, and in the middle you can see the spiders broken and falling back. We made a mistake here, because you should go back half move, not full move. Which meant it took me a longer to get the spiders back in, because it did rally, thank goodness. It also had a serious repercussion later in the game, which you will see. So the elves try to swing around the flank and roll four. They ain't going nowhere and they're not doing anything. <laughs> it was a long time for the elves going to this really. Slow playing it. And wow, there you go. The rangers try to activate. They're all four. Not doing anything this turn. Goblins go. So we're flying into the melee again. We've got those broken guys. Let's charge them. And there's my dice at the bottom, just a handful of nothing at all. Well, five, half a hit, no good. And look at that lot coming back at me, because uh, actually, yeah, he should be battered, hitting on sixes. Whew. Anyway, we've got him hitting on fours, which is about seven hits, another three dead goblins. They're in trouble. Yeah. That's what goblins do, though. Trail back to their own baseline, broken, same any game. Just off the left edge of the picture, you can't see them. Now the orcs and the black orcs are right in the firing line. They are ready to pile in if they don't get shot to pieces first. You can also see the spiders sort of hiding behind the mountains so they don't get shot by the elves. Well, that was my idea, but uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have been so lazy. I should take them off the blinking movement tree and park them so they're properly hiding because they were just poking out and they did get shot at, as we'll see. Right, so the orcs, because the rangers good enough not to activate again. <laughs> so in go the orcs. Have that. They are counted as sergeants. Just check my table in front of me. Excuse my cold. Uh, the attack value is five, so they're fitting on fives. Oh, those dice there look as though they're referring to the black orcs, because they hit them threes, because they're better arms. Anyway, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Point is, to a couple of hits. We're getting stuck in. So they did left to do a couple of hits. A couple of hits come back on the Orcs as well. Both taking leadership tests, or courage tests as they're called. Yay, and the Orcs succeed and knock those back. Now the Black Orcs go chomping their way in. This is where the extra dice for the General would have been just too much. But the other rule in this game is Generals challenge each other. So there's that wimpy handmaiden against my mega-armed, super-crazy, grim-gore Black Orc. But the way it plays out, you roll three dice each, a bit like Risk. Count off the two highest dice, then the next two dice, then the next two dice. If you get more hits on the other side, you kill them. So it was a crazy thing for me to do, really, because that would have been the game. Oh, I should have mentioned at the beginning. The objective of this game is for them to kill Grimgore. But I rolled well. A couple of fives, so there goes the... The Rangers General, dead. And the Black Orcs also attacking on threes. So as you can see, they had six hits. And look at that. They get another pile of hits coming back. So they did more or less the same to each other. But men at arms, armor four. That's only one hit on the Black Orcs. And one or two down on the, the Handmaidens. It was enough for them to fail their courage test. They really are a bit wimpy, these uh, rangers, compared to the mighty orcs and goblins. 
And we stomp through. So they do a, what should be a half move back with a broken marker or battered. But we've done the full move. It's a shame when people are shooting at you and you're trying to catch them. <laughs> They're moving too fast. But hey, hey, I was the one with the rule book, so no complaints. Right, the goblins pile in again. The second unit, this is goblins unit two. Charging, so we're hitting on fives, four hits. Again, not bad. Now, battered units only hit on sixes. <laughs> uh, uh, Twelve dice, four sixes. Come on, you're killing me here. What's going on? So another two goblins dead. They're going to be struggling for the rest of the game. I think they actually broke. Yeah, I think those goblins broke. Spend the rest of the game running back towards their own uh, baseline. So now the orcs are doing the work. And the other two goblin units are trying to come up as fast as they can. Or at least one of them is. Oops, excuse my cold again. Right, there. So the the orcs are now desperately trying to get across that battlefield because the elves have started swinging around behind the mountain and they're going to start shooting soon. The black orcs want to chase up and force off those handmaidens and the goblins need to get stuck in and just provide some extra hits, get in the way, whatever they can do. Just the game is afoot. We've got to break this army before they get Grimgore. So you see the shot. The elves have got a shot. You don't need outline of sight with everything. One will do. Measure the range to the nearest. They pinged off a couple of hits. Oh, we'll go back to those orcs in a second. Over the other side. Elf general now is, is starting to activate. One unit is starting to swing back round behind the mountain. Their plan, keep drawing the orcs on and then pile in and shoot them from the flank. But the other two units are still coming around this way. And they've got a long way around to get back into this battle. There we are. Spy is just showing enough to be shot. So you can see I've rolled seven. Uh, their courage is five. They've taken two hits. So seven required. Well, again, I thought you got them down for a fail, but there we are. Should be a pass. Right, the Black Orcs have activated again and stomped in and finished those off. So there go the guys with the Javelins. They're out of the game. Um, oh, I should have also mentioned, if you fail the Courage Test, you're not back half a turn. And then each turn you try again, and if you fail, you lose another figure. If you score zero or less, units wiped out. Uh, you, you rolled low, so they're gone. Start to see the battle unfold now. Goblins uh, still there on the left. Well, sorry, in the middle. Or that's the last of the goblins. Those two units. Black orcs need to get round, finish off those handmaidens. The orcs have moved forward. They're in a position where they can attack the elf archers or the other guys. Whoever's still there, whoever's available. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Yeah, we don't want to be as near a full unit of expert elven archers. Ouch. They're hitting on fours. Twelve dice. There's eight of them. This way wasn't nine, really. But anyway, they're, they're armor three, so that's two lots dead. Now, I think, checking the rules afterwards, they get a plus one armor against shooting. So it should have been armor four. But as you can see, it's eight hits anyway. Would have made no difference. It's two figures down. And another courage test. The unit's down to nine, so now it's starting to add up. The test is taken at minus three. So even though they're bravery four, it's not that he's seven, so it's getting harder to pass these tests. And sure enough, they're all four. Well, as you can see, more hits. And only roll six. Need at least seven, so they're starting to break. Yep, the elves are realized. We need to go the other way, get back round the mountain. Just a close-up. I struggle with the bows. I like people to see the string on the bows. <laughs> yep, yeah, and there we are. A ten for the orcs. So they have rallied. They are there. Just get stuck in now, lads. You can still see them do some damage. The black orcs have activated again. 
they hit on threes, they rolled a load of hits as you can see. Unfortunately, four hits coming back as well, so another orc drops. Four's the armor needed to kill those. But they were gone. The orcs, unfortunately, get shot again. Another load of hits. Yeah. Courage test three. <laughs> And as you can see, one, two, three, six figures left. So it means six is six dead. So they're on minus six. So three plus minus six is still minus. Anyway, they're gone. That's their game over. Yep, just confirmation of all the hits coming in. I got those fives. Black Orcs mopping up. Yep. Confirmation the orcs are broken, they're out of the game. And the elves have now activated, and cavalry moves 12 inches, and they've come thundering in and charged the black orcs. Oh, I was goaded into this a bit. Yeah, Adrian got me there a bit. I was going to put the black orcs sort of behind the, the goblins or near them, out of charge range of the elves. Let the goblins take the heat, they'll probably get smashed, then the black orcs charge. But I didn't seem a very orky thing to do. We can't be afraid, little pixies. Even if they are fully armoured on a horse, charging with lances. Ouch. Okay, so they piled in. There's his 12 dice. <laughs> Is that 12 out of 12? Or 11 out of 12 hits. Not bad rolling. The Black Orcs get a few hits. We're both on armour 4, so it's 1. So it's 6 hits for the Black Orcs equals 1. 11 for them equals 2. Could have been 3, I guess. And the goblin's ready to pounce in. But when it came to the courage tests, both sides held, which means attacker bounces off. And this is where moving back a full move came back to haunt me. If it had been a half a move, all the goblins and the black orcs could all have piled on, counted as charging, and maybe wiped out the cavalry. Uh, we'd worked out what the rules should have been at this stage. But as everything else had been bouncing back a full move, I don't know, it was a bit soft. Let them go back a full 12, which put them out of charge range of everything. Mm. Yeah, which meant these goblins standing there all ready to pile in, couldn't pile in. See, they're out of range, even out of range of these guys. Oh well, yeah, it's a bit of fun. <laughs> Probably lost anyway. Right, so these goblins now have to take another round of shooting from the elves, not as bad as it could have been. And they managed to hang around. As you can see, more death. Oh, actually, it looks like this. That, that unit's gone. Look, they only rolled a five. Yes, so I guess it didn't help the fact they couldn't charge those uh, elven cavalry. Yeah, look at all those fives and sixes, the shooting and the melees were deadly. Ow. Yep, so they come running back. Down to four goblins. They're not going to be rallied. So I think there's still one unit of goblins left. Plus a few of the black orcs and the spider riders. That's pretty much it. Everything else is streaming back towards the baseline. But there's also not many yells left. Now the spiders come off the mountain, skirmishing with javelins. If you're half speed, you can throw. It's a minus one unit to hit. But they came down, why not? Throw in sixes, got a couple of hits. Courage test for the elves, you never know, might get lucky. Unfortunately, they did pass. But there's something to think about behind him now. So, um... Surviving goblins have moved into range. Everything's pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. Hoping for the best. And the elves can't shoot both ways. In fact, they couldn't shoot either ways because these guys on the rough ground failed to activate. Ha <laughs> ha! they do nothing. Very frustrating game sometimes. So, the spiders get to chuck their javelins. Hit on fives this time because they're not moving. Have that. Take another hit. Do a courage test, elves. If they fail, they're out of there. They don't. But anyway, this is where the goblins get their moment of glory. Instead of being shot to pieces, they can now charge in, fight a melee on pretty equal terms, because the archers aren't very good in the melee. 
and they beat them and send them scurrying back with a battered marker on them. But, ah, not quite broken, unfortunately. You can see he's rolled six there. Let's just double check that a second. The courage is four. We gave a second commander for the elves as a freebie, so that becomes five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sure there's four dead. Means he's a nine. I reckon they should. Let's do the maths on this again. It's rolled six. With the general, we call it seven. Bravery's four. Minus the four hits, minus eight. I that's a minus one. I think they should be taken off the board. Oh well, too late now. It's very interesting doing battle reports. You know, it's loads of mistakes you made, both in things you did and playing the rules. But if they'd come off, might just have survived. Hmm. Unfortunately, the elves in the rough terrain did activate this turn. Short range, hitting on fours. Goodbye, spiders. Well, at least you did your job. Yeah, three on the <laughs> courage test doesn't help, does it? Oh, dear. They were definitely... That's definitely below zero. So here we go. Try our luck again. Charge. Everything's going to pile in. Oh, sorry. Just explain. Uh, couldn't reach them in one turn, so their plan was put the goblins between the Blackhawks and the Elven Cavalry. Uh, goblins stop the charge and the Black Orcs will pile in. So I think this game, that's worth thinking about. Use them as, use uh, cheaper units as well as skirmishes or chaff to use Warhammer terms. And of course those Goblins got bashed up. They're not going to come back again. There's only a couple of Black Orcs left. But what's a Black Orc commander to do in a situation like this? You've got to charge, haven't you? In they go. Killed another Mounted Elf, just hoping if you just fail a courage test, the goblins go in, they kill another one, so the elves are down to half strength now, so that means they're only going to get six dice in the melee, so twelve. Starting to, it just can't get them to break. One bad roll will be enough. Looking like you can see all sixes again. So you can see, unfortunately, uh, the little red battered markers everywhere now on the Orcs and Goblins side and the Elves are managing to keep rallying. Here's a close-up. Not much left. Grimmore's getting two extra dice, so I'm rolling eight dice. There's a bit of a help. There's a bit of a long-range shot. As you can see, almost everything's gone. There is a unit of Elves left on the rough terrain on the right. The broken one, which I think well, it should have been taken off the table. doesn't really matter. The cavalry are doing all the work. You see red dot, red dot, red dots. All the goblins are fleeing. Now, in the conditions for this game, it says... Um, I've got the exact wording. But the game ends when there's five units left on the table. Now, do broken units count? I mean, they're not much use for anything. One, two, three. If the game had ended then, Grimgore's alive. Uh, orcs and goblins get sort of a, a win, or a marginal win at least. There we go. If we just kill one more unit, or even if one of the goblins would just die instead of just creeping off, the game would be won, but too late. The elves charge again. <sighs> oh, that was a horrible roll on the courage test, about three. <laughs> Failed by about five, even with the general there. And Grim goes no more, and the game's over. And all that survives is three elf cavalry, and a unit of archers, and some fleeing goblins. <laughs> it's really good fun. Very flexible system. I'll be sticking on some ideas to make it more fantasy, special characters, spells, generals and heroes, that kind of thing, without cluttering up the game and without changing the mechanics. Just a few little ideas. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave some comments. Tell me there are many things I'm sure we got wrong with the rules. I say we're a bit novices on this one. Uh, don't claim to be experts, but uh, yeah. Great fun. I recommend it. I hope to see you soon. Bye.